Hi there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and my project today is a very bright and happy Halloween card featuring the Pinwheel Party Bundle from the Greatery that you see here. So it comes with this stencil set that creates that cool border. There is also a, a little stamp set and a die set. Now you can purchase these all separately, um, but you can also get them in a bundle. I got them in the bundle. So it has six stencils. These first two um, are sort of standalone, and then the last four work together to create the border that we'll be using for the card. This first one has like individual, you can die, you can color the die cut um, pinwheels from the die cut, the die set. So that's pretty nice. And then the second one lets you add, add uh, color along the border once you've completed it. But to start off with, I'm going to be using the A1 stencil. Hopefully you can see it says A1 there in the lower right corner. And then this stencil set also has a like an etched line for a horizontal as well as a vertical placement of an A2 sized card um, so that you can line everything up real easily. Now I'm starting off with an A2 size, as I mentioned, a uh, piece of cardstock. This is Gina K's heavyweight white cardstock. And I'm gonna tape it down with some painter's tape and then I have used pixie spray on the back of all the stencils and I highly, highly recommend that for this um, partic in particular, especially the glittered portions of this because it can get a little messy if you don't have it really well ad adhered, I guess, down even though it's repositionable and removable. Now I'm going to color the first layer with Distress Oxides, so I'm going to be using my Life Changer Blender Brushes and Mode Lawn is the first color. So I'm using kind of a traditional Halloween color palette of green, purple, orange, and goldy yellow. And so this first layer of the stencil fills in like half the spokes. I guess are they called spokes on a pinwheel? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but you can see there are spaces in between each one as I'm filling them in. And that is where we go in with the second stencil and fill in with the with the glitter paint that we'll be using here. Now there are some areas where they get a little close to each other like this green and this orange. You could cover those areas with like a piece of tape or something if you're concerned about it. I just use my fingers to cover them when I needed to. No, not too big a deal. So did I already mention that it was fossilized amber, wilted violet, mowed lawn, and carved pumpkin are my four colors for distress oxides? And that would be layer one done. All right, now I am lining up stencil A2 <laughs> to fill in the second half of the spokes on those pinwheels. So I am gonna be using the Aladdin Eye Zinc Diamond Glitter Paint. You do need to squish the pouches of this really well before you squirt it out on your work surface because if you let them sit for too long, like a day, say, the glitter and the medium that they're suspended in will separate and then uh, the glitter goes to the bottom and so you'll get really soupy glitter at, at the top if you don't squish it well, mix it up well, I guess, um, before you spread it out because you don't want it to be too wet or too soupy because it will go under your stencil and mess with your distress oxides and just make a mess. How do you think I know that? <laughs> So I learned that the hard way, so just learn from my mistakes. Um, but if you squish the pouches, which are really easy to do, it's like because they're super flexible, um, you don't have that problem at all. So the first color was golden, and then this is violet. And this is a French company, so the, the names are actually in French, but I can't say them. So I'm just using the, uh, the American English translation. <laughs> and then I scrape like my excess back in the pouch. I just tap the pouch to push it down and then scrape it in and tap it to push it down and scrape it and scrape in the rest of it as needed. And then this would be, it's actually the color is copper, believe it or not, but it is very, it's a very orange copper. So it works really well for this and then this is dark green so again I picked colors obviously to coordinate with the distress oxide colors that I used now you could go completely different and have like a two-toned um, pinwheel which would be cool too um, totally optional and up to you that's the great thing about this stencil set is you can just do you can mix colors as you like now I let that completely dry before I put 
this stencil down, which is B1, on top of it. So in arid Colorado, that was at least an hour, possibly an hour and a half. Might take longer if you live in a more humid climate. And so you can see now this stencil fills in the remainder of the pinwheels along the border. And so you can see I'm covering up the open areas of the pinwheel that's too close to that, that yellow one with my finger and um, just kind of filling in as we go. So same colors of Distress Oxides, nothing different. And for, I gotta say, I love the Distress Oxides for this because they fill it in super fast and really nice and, and colorful, like, like really good saturation pretty quickly. And so that is the second layer of the pinwheels. And now we're gonna do exactly what I did already, which is lay down B, the stencil B2. Um, that fills in the spokes on the second round of pinwheels and I am going to use again the same Aladdin Eisen glitter paint to fill these in and I'm just being kind of careful around the areas where it's where they're really close to each other but otherwise very straightforward and simple and easy and then just pull it off and there you go now there is the totally dry border I let that dry overnight because I knew I wanted to die cut it out using the this sort of border die from the die set. And I wanted to make sure that it was completely, completely dry and set up before I ran it through my Gemini, which it has been done now. And then with the stamp set, I'm using this tiny little stamp with the stars on it to put some white bunches of stars onto my black card base. Now the black card base is from Gina K. It is uh, black onyx. It is again a two size top folding horizontal card base. And that white pigment ink helps pull the white from the border into the card base. And it has another little nice pattern to it as well. Now I've cut out the words Halloween. Each letter is a different color using the Lawn Fawn Oliver's Stitched ABCs die set, and then I have the word happy cut out of some gold metallic cardstock using um, Elizabeth Craft Science Words 3 Happy Holidays die set. I have a couple spiders that um, are my own creation. I will have those available in an SVG as well as a, a PNG file if you would like them. They will be free. And then I have some sequins. Some of them I have cut in half because I will only need half of them because <laughs> the, some of the pinwheels run off the page. And then those little stars are die cut out of some metallic green cardstock that coordinates using the stars from the die set. Now I'm going to use liquid adhesive for almost all the elements on this card. I do think that that's a good idea just because it's a nice bond and it also allows you to sort of rearrange things or move things as you need it like if you don't get them lined up perfectly the first time and I rarely rarely do. Now you can see the letters are pretty big, so I have to overlap them to get them to fit across the card base. Um, and I did use coordinating cardstock for that. So the colors of the Halloween letters are Gina K Designs, Wild Lilac, and Lucky Clover, and then Concord and Knight's Buttercup and Marmalade. And they really, really go very nicely with the Distress Oxide colors, like almost a perfect match, which is really nice. And it's just super, super happy and colorful. Now I did glue down all the letters in Halloween. I cut some of that out because boy, that would get boring if you had to watch me like glue every single one down. <laughs> and then I'm gonna pop up my little spiders on some foam circles. Now these spiders, I've got two big ones and two little ones in this SVG file. So I cut, I actually drew those with my brother's scan and cut. And now I'm using a little jelly roll pen to leave put a little cobweb on the back of the smaller spider or string, I guess, cob, cobweb string. <laughs> anyway, so the SVG file has uh, four spiders in it and I drew them with my brother's scan and cut and then cut them out with my scan and cut. But you could also um, just print it. There will be like a PNG file that you could just print and fussy cut out if you wanted to do it that way. That will be in the video description. There's a link to the download as well as uh, on my blog. Now I've filled in the holes on the pin or the sequins with various Nuvo drops. So I've got honey gold, purple rain, uh, ripened pumpkin, and then I added two little um, eyes to each of the spiders, yeah, just two, and then I filled in the black sequin as well. And that is the completed card. 
I hope you can tell in the pictures and the and the video how bright and sparkly this card is. Like it is super super happy. And oh, there's a good look at the glitter. Um, I would say this would make amazing invitations. Like I see why this is called a party bundle. Like it would be great for birthdays, for any number of holidays, but some Halloween invitations would be very cool with this. So I hope you check it out. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've been inspired. As always, uh, supplies used in the video are linked in the video description and over on my blog, as well as the SVG file um, for the spiders. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that as well. And leave me a comment because I love hearing from you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.